liars. You see, they swore that God raised Jesus from the dead. But if he was not raised, they're liars. And if all of this is the case, then we are still in our sins. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 17. You see, if Jesus died on the cross, he was nothing more than a lunatic. And we would benefit nothing from that death. Then, those believers in Jesus who have already died, what do they have to look forward to? Nothing. They would have no atonement for their sins. And they would have no hope after this life is over. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 18. And in general, those who would be called Christians those who are of Christ are most to be pitied. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. Because we believe in a false Messiah, a liar. Our faith in him, in this liar, would cause us to refrain from many, if not all, the worldly pleasures that are offered to us especially keeping in mind the different persecutions that we would deal with. All of that would be miserable to us, and it's all for naught. However, it is pointed out very plainly in Scripture that Jesus was, in fact, resurrected. The significance for that, or for us today, is, first off, the fact that Jesus was raised. It gives us justification. It verifies our, ver our justification. Romans chapter 4, verses 24 and 25. Jesus said that his blood would be adequate cleansing our sins. He shed that blood in his death. Matthew 26, verse 28. And by raising Jesus from the dead, God demonstrated that the sacrifice of Jesus... His only begotten Son was acceptable in His sight. Was in fact the propitiation for our sins. It was an adequate payment for the wrath of God. Romans 8 verses 33 and 34. Furthermore, it demonstrates the power that is available to the Christian. We see this in our conversion. Colossians chapter 2, verses 11 and 12, and 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21. There is power in the blood. Why? Because Jesus not only was sinless, but he was, in fact, resurrected. And that power has the ability, that power cleanses our sins away when we comply with the terms of pardon. And that power is available to us throughout our Christian walk, throughout our Christian life. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. It gives us hope. Because if Jesus was resurrected due to his righteousness, those who obey his gospel have the same type of reward if they're faithful. It gives us hope, the hope of heaven. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 21. Ultimately, it gives us the hope of heaven. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Thus, if Christ was raised, our complete, our total loyalty is thus demanded. Romans chapter 14, verse 9. You see, Jesus was raised to be exalted. He was raised to be our Lord. Whenever you think of that term, Lord, I think typically of the feudal system in, in Europe, specifically like with England. That Lord had absolute rule over his area, his region. If you tried to cross his way, go against what he had declared, there were consequences. Death being one of them. 
We sang this morning, our Lord is King of kings. He's Lord of lords. There is none higher than Jesus. You know, we, we have a president of the United States. We have these different kings, sheiks, all these different rulers, monarchs. And they do have authority and power over their respective countries or territories. But just as we hear, everyone on this planet living and not living, we will bow the knee to Jesus our Savior. We will bow the knee to Jesus our Lord. Even those who did not claim Him as their Lord in this life. Thus, our loyalty is demanded for Him. We are to give our lives in service to Him. Romans chapter 14, verse 7 through 8. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. Now, Roman, uh, excuse me, chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, Paul makes it very clear. Verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. By which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Dropping down to verse 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. See, Paul is making, continuing to make his case that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was in fact resurrected. This is the end result that gives us hope. Verse 55 of that chapter. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You see, the significance of the resurrection of Jesus ultimately gives us hope of heaven. We don't have to worry about death. We don't have to worry about the, con the consequences of death. If, verse 58, our labor is not in vain in the Lord. We're always working for the Lord. Doing what He commands. Living out His gospel. Abstaining from the things we ought to. And doing those things that we ought to. But as an unbeliever, as someone who is of the world, who is not a Christian, you don't have this hope to look forward to. You should be worried about the sting of death. Because when this life is over, what do you have to look forward to? It's not heaven. You think of all the evil people in the world. How we hate them. Think of Adolf Hitler, all the horrible things he did. Is that the kind of individual you want to spend eternity with? Think of all the people who have murdered Ted Bundy and on down the line. All the people who we consider have done horrible things outside of the fact that they're not obedient to Christ. That's who you're choosing to align yourself with when this life is over. Now, if that appeals to you, there's not really anything I can say to change your mind. But the gospel offers hope. That hope is due to the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Excuse me, Jesus the Christ. So if you're not a Christian this afternoon, why not become one? Belief in Christ, repentance of past sins, and confession of Him before others, ultimately resulting in your baptism. Now you've been saved. Now you've been added to the church. Now you have that hope of eternal life. However, as an erring child of God, you've allowed sin back into your life. Why not have that hope once more? 
Confess your faults. We'll pray with you and for you. You can be restored to an upstanding relationship with your Creator. Why not keep that hope? Whichever your need might be of these two, please make it known as together we stand and sing.